Keep in touch with the Wolf Connection podcast on our Instagram handle at the Wolf Connection Pod or email us your questions, comments, and guest ideas to podcast at wolfconnection.org. Thank you for your support and howls to you all. Welcome to the Wolf Connection podcast. I'm your host, John Calvin. All right, this is our third and final podcast, I believe, or we might have one more after this, but I'll say this is the culmination, um, I would say. So uh, those of you that are listening, you've heard our episode with Emily Cohen, you've heard our episode with Carter Niemeyer, and now we have uh, two more incredible individuals who we're going to get into a little bit more. Uh, This is our our third part about this uh, Wyoming wolf incident, obviously involving Cody Roberts and the, the tragic death of this wolf uh, that was had happened in Wyoming. We have Kim Bean from Wolves of the Rockies and Kristen Combs from Wyoming Wildlife, Wildlife Advocates. Sorry. Um, thank you both for being here and thank you for uh, just all the work that you're already doing. I know you guys have been on this uh, pretty much since day one, first of all. Uh, so how are you doing? I'll go Kim first. How are you doing today, Kim? <laughs> no. Um Listen, compared to compared to Kristen, um, I, I'm I'm treading water. This girl's a, a monster, and um, if it wasn't for Kristen, I mean, we're just backing her up. You know, this is a Wyoming. This is this is this is in Wyoming. It's not just a Wyoming issue, but this is in Wyoming, and and Kristen has been doing. And I'm not kidding you when I say 24 hours a day, so she gets a nap in with two teenage kids and an amazing husband. Um, yeah, my heart breaks and it hurts and it starts to crack now thinking about this because I think we're all at our wits' end with going through all this. But Kristen is is is. She does my heart good and she's done such amazing work and we're just all just, yeah. just trying to help. Yeah. Kristen, I mean, just from your perspective, um, I think if anybody hasn't heard about this story from jump, I think most people understand what's going on, but yeah, as Kim said, it really seems like you, you are the lead, you are the person, you are the group that is tackling this from your perspective, where, where do things sit as we talk about this, situation with uh, Cody Roberts and this and this wolf incident that has happened uh, just a few weeks ago. Yeah, well, I also want to say thank you to Kim. She is amazing and is my rock in all this. And I draw a lot of strength from her. Um, and I couldn't do it without um, Lisa from Wyoming Untrapped as well. She's been really great at digging and finding information and just connecting and we we're just we're, everybody's tag teaming and everybody's doing it as much as they can right now. Um, cause we don't want to let this opportunity pass us by. And the situation as it stands right now, we did get some good news today that the sheriff's office is investigating. Um, they did not, they put out a statement that saying that they did not know about the incident until it went viral. Um, last week, I guess that would have been, or a few days. I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> um, whenever it whenever it finally hit the news uh, and they started getting phone calls. So they, that's a huge step in the right direction to gather evidence for um, an agency other than the Game and Fish to be investigating this and um, to just have some further light shed on it. We want to, we want to get to the truth of what happened that day and how long it lasted and what was done. And the world is just outraged and shocked that this is legal and that there's, you know, that there are people in Wyoming saying there's nothing we can do about it. People just cannot wrap their heads around that. And I mean, I can't either. So yeah, I the the outpouring of support from people across the world has been just phenomenal. Yeah, and I'll say we have noticed that uh, this event particularly has really inspired people to mobilize more than more than I think any other event since we started the podcast. Um, at least for our for our well, really beyond our hardcore audience, just 
we're seeing a lot of post letters and phone calls are being made and we're getting a ton of ton of messages. So clearly this is striking a chord. And I, I think it's I think it's that photo, right? The the red tape photo. It's really hard to look at. If you break it down, there are just there's several elements that are particularly disturbing, but so what beyond the $250 penalty seems to be part of the investigation? Is, is, what else is possible in terms of charges? I'm sure they're not saying much. They have to get their, their, their story straight first. But are there any rumors of what charges might be applicable beyond the $250 penalty, which is obviously insignificant? Um, so the sheriff's office and prosecutor's offices, you know, they're being very, they're following their protocol and, you know, cannot comment on an investigation it's ongoing. So we're getting no information out of them yet. Um, that eventually should be public record, um, down the road. And, uh, the thing about this is, is that we've had attorneys look at the animal statute cruelty law sorry, the animal cruelty statute in Wyoming, um, article 10. And we, the prosecutor, so we sent a letter to the sheriff and the prosecutor, uh, Wolves of the Rockies and Wyoming Untrapped and the Large Carnivore Fund and, and us. And we told them that, hey, actually, this was not, you know, this should not be exempt from this animal cruelty law. Um, there, the law is vague enough that it does not specifically spell out that predators are exempt from torture. It says killing and destruction. It does not say anything about torture. And it also um, is very clear to specifically refer to domestic animals and pet and like pets, you know, and livestock in certain areas. And then other areas just as animal. So, you know, that can be interpreted as if, it doesn't specifically state it because it does specifically state in certain parts of the law that there actually can be charges that can be brought under that law. So the prosecutor has conceded that, yes, there does seem to be maybe a little wiggle room here. Um, and that's what we're really hoping that they focus in on. Kristen, I want to go to you first and then I'll, uh, Kim, jump in if there's something that you want to add. Kristen, you said something that I, I, I resonated me resonate with me just before where I, I think what gets me is the fact that the sheriff's office is investigating this now or only heard about the story until it went viral. To me, where is this, if you can, where is this disconnect from the citizens, the Department of Fish and Game and law enforcement that something of this caliber can basically go almost unseen until someone submits a photo and sends the story. I've read on Wildfile, I've read on KHOL, they have been denied requests for information, canceled interviews. I don't know if you can answer that. I think it's just something that really struck me from the, the jump that this is now only getting investigated. And I understand due diligence, I understand process. and. The law takes a long, t you know, a while, Lady Justice. But where is this disconnect coming from? The first place that I think it originates from is that in Wyoming, we have basically determined that there is a set of animals that are considered predators that are not worthy of life. They're not worthy of their place in the ecosystem. They're not worthy of having respect. And I mean, the culture here that is pervasive toward of, of hatred and vitriol toward wolves and coyotes and skunks and raccoons and all those other species that fall underneath the predator classification. The state is basically, you know, just signing off on saying we don't really care about these animals. We don't care what happens to them. There's not many laws regulating anything about them. In fact, you know, they're mostly under the Department of Agriculture. And and this, this culture coming out of the Game and Fish Department of not, not never talking about the benefits of wolves and what they bring to the ecosystem and what they bring to our economy. 
but instead fostering this this continued hatred of wolves and that is sort of i think at just the bottom of the of all of this is that wolves and coyotes and all those animals that are predators are just it's like nobody cares about them no one the is if they are even even thought to be threatening someone's livestock you you know you can kill them anyway um and that is just that we're just seeing the the manifestation of the brokenness of our wildlife management Jim, did you have anything to add to that <laughs> you know it's so hard for me not to talk i actually hold my jaw only because everything you're saying is true and and i think it, it comes down to and we were talking about this but, and guys we've talked about this it's a systemic issue and it goes so far back right i mean it, it's horrifying that state age and this is not a wyoming issue this is not a wyoming issue this is a a global issue in so many ways when it comes to natural predators when it comes to natural carnivores when it comes to um somebody who is competing for the same thing right but we watch every time we go to a meeting uh, a, a, a game and fish meeting or a fish and wildlife meeting or a parks and wildlife however you want to look at it a state agency meeting we hear and i'm a broken record on this the the anti predator people get up and spew things that make zero sense but it is it's vitriol it's it's, it's fabrication it's fear and loathing and these state agencies zip their lip they don't say a word they do not correct them so then that just allows this vitriol to just get bigger and bigger and this hatred and this angst and this need to feel that wolves and coyotes and skunks and raccoons and fox are horrible creatures that have no benefit when it's just the opposite. And if these state agencies would stop pandering and started educating and being what they're supposed to be, which is wildlife management people, they should be educating the benefits of every single one of these animals. Because without them, without them, we have rats and overrun rodents. They, everybody, everything has a reason for being on this planet. But these state agencies pander to certain constituents. And that has to stop now. It has to stop. Because the anger and the hatred, that is bred by these agencies. The bottom line with that is, the system is what killed this wolf. The system is what is killing these coyotes. The system is what allows these snowmobiles to run these animals over and call it hunting. That's a system. So that system creates that really psychotic mindset that can do what this guy did to this wolf. And like you said, Stephen, that picture- Yeah, it's bad. I mean, I feel I feel as though we're downplaying the the kind of personality, regardless of the legality of it, that wants to do this kind of thing to to wild animals, particularly like this. Obviously, the snow most the snowmobile situation and parading it around a bar for no other reason than to to just say I'm proud of this situation. Um, I think it does warrant to some degree a psychological evaluation in my mind at this because, and I'm not even being facetious or funny or, or any, I mean it, I mean it really. And, and the strangest thing is this kind of activity. If you were to do it illegally, it would be obvious to everyone that you should not be the type of person to own a firearm. If it were illegal, it'd be obvious. You'd be like, well, yeah, that's an insane thing to do. And obviously this person should never have access to a firearm yet because it is legal technically to do most of it, it just translates as this is a normal gun owning hunter and this kind of insult to animals is, I mean, at least I, my understanding was that it was a precursor to the type of personality that does other things to human beings. And I think this kind of thing, like oddly legal is, is relevant to that theory. Um, yeah, it just strikes me as like th this, this is obviously the type of personality that should not own firearms.
there's 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 plenty and i mean plenty stacks of research out there that show that people who abuse animals at all but a vast majority tend to harm others in other words i mean hell let's 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 just go there jeffrey dahmer is a great example okay that's pretty crazy that's pretty psychotic um and there's just a multitude of of serial killers, of abusers, wife abusers, child abusers, you name it, that started out abusing animals first or throughout because it's a way to to dominate or whatever that psychosis is. But yeah, and the sad part is is that it's not just condoned. It's okay, it's legal, it's encouraged. And when we have state agencies that encourage and condone these types of behaviors, what the heck do you expect? I mean. Well, and he didn't get in trouble for doing what he did. He got in trouble for transporting a live, warm-blooded, wild animal. That's what he got a $250 fine for. So where does this actually start from? And where where does this blame go? I mean, he needs to be held accountable for his disturbing actions hands down but it starts with legislation and state agencies that 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 promote condone and make law this type of um behavior yeah and kristen i was going to actually i'll ask you about this because kim you just mentioned something that i had asked carter about um and he did speak to it a little bit but so this the the law that he broke is the possession of wildlife right that's yes that's correct so is there is there truthfully not a spectrum of penalty for this idea of of possession meaning how is taking an animal out of the woods alive into your vehicle and later shooting it in your backyard for example treated the same as as taping a wild animal's mouth and and parading it around a bar um how does the word possession sort of encompass both of these things and and treat them the same i think because nobody's ever really cared to define it you know i think that's it's no one's bothered about it because you know this is probably something that trappers do is sometimes take live animals um along with them uh the only the the state the statute that he violated just says that it is illegal to possess a wolf. That is a wolf dog, a wolf. You cannot have a live wolf in Wyoming. So basically, yeah, I think there's nobody has really stopped to take a look at this because I agree with you. What? Yeah, there's a whole, there's a big difference between, you know, just maybe you've shot an animal and then, you know, you, it's alive for a few minutes until you, you know, put it out of its misery. But I mean, this just reaches a whole nother level of, you know, just somebody that has zero empathy, zero respect for life. And our laws allow that person to do this, Or, or at least that's what, you know, the game and fish department and the state wants you to think right now. And yeah, there needs to be a lot more clarification. And regardless, there is no, I don't know one sane person that can say it is okay to run over an animal, to chase down an animal and run it over with a snowmobile. That just, if nothing else comes out of this, can we at least make that illegal? And anyone that tries to defend that, I don't, I mean, I, I'm like speechless about it. I don't know what, how to wrap my head around somebody that would defend that kind of an action. I I don't either. Isn't there, I, now I, I believe Monday, and again, remind me because my days are running together too. Have you already, has there already been an introduction of legislation for that act as well to make the act of running over wildlife with a snowmobile illegal has that is that starting to get uh, brought to 
the legislature? Is there something in writing that you guys have that's starting to go that direction? I thought I saw something on social media or there was an article about it. Is that accurate, Kristen? Well, back in 2019, there was a bill that right. was introduced. Um, it went to the Travel, Recreation, Wildlife, and Cultural Resources Committee of our legislature. It didn't make it out of committee. The arguments devolved into ranchers defending their right to take predators, to, to kill predators. They didn't want to have any restrictions on, you know, quote unquote, protecting their livestock. But this is not about protecting your livestock. This is not about predator control. This is about an act that is inherently cruel and should never happen to any animal. I mean, not even a mouse should have to endure this. So that the fact that that bill and there was a there was a similar bill, I think in 2021, maybe that was introduced in Montana. It also did not make it through. And so. Who are the legislators that are not that are looking at this and saying, no, this is not important for us to say as a society that this is not OK. And. And even, you know, another thing that, that I was thinking about, too, is that do, was it the intention of these legislators that passed this animal cruelty law and that updated it recently in the last few years? Was it the intention of them to allow cruelty to occur to wildlife? You know, what? maybe we should talk to them and ask them about, well, do you think, you know, here's an act that happened and it turns out it's it's not covered underneath this law. Was that something that you intended to happen? I, I don't know. I just, I want to, you know, the, we cannot hide behind this specter of, well, we're doing it for, you know, predator control. And it's because I'm, as me as a rancher, I'm going to lose money because livestock are going to be killed because I can't kill this coyote or whatever, you know, or I can't kill this wolf. Yeah. Yeah. They're not even related. They're not, it is not even related at all. And one of the good things that we are starting to see is hunters coming out and saying like, this is not hunting. This is not ethical. This is, this has nothing to do with hunting. And my only frustration is that, you know, where were you back in 2019? Like we, we have known this snowmobiles, this running over animals with snowmobiles has been going on for decades. How, you know, we, this is, this has just got to be the end of that right now, right now. And I just want to know too, and I, I, I'll, I'll start with you, Kristen, and then Kim chime in too. And I asked Carter this too, but I think this gets to, and I'm glad you brought up the Hunter uh, advocacy just at this point lately for this act. Um, I know Stephen had mentioned this to me over the weekend and even some of the stuff earlier in the week uh, on Monday or so where the hunting community has seemed to come out obviously against this act saying how heinous it is. This is not ethical, but we have also seen comments not only from the governor, we've seen comments from former, I guess, fishing game employees or directors, whatever it may be. I, again, I don't want to beleaguer the point. I, I can't remember who it was, but stating that this is not Wyoming ethics and surrounding wildlife. And from what I've been able to see since we have started this journey with this podcast to talk about these issues, to talk about this bond between humans and wolves, there has been nothing to lead either of us to believe that Wyoming has thought nothing but these types of acts are regular, normal, and legal. Where are they getting this rhetoric from? And as an advocacy group in the state where this happened, is this just trying to get out ahead of it as opposed to actually lobbying for change? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is very much the ethics of Wyoming when it comes to wolves and coyotes and other predators. Very much so. You want to trap a fox and leave it in a trap for you know a few days? No big deal. We're going to allow that. We're going to let that happen. Um... Wyoming is not used to being scrutinized. Wyoming likes to hide and act like everything's fine here, nothing to see, just business as usual. And for anyone to act like this is a one-off, that 
you know, this guy is some psycho that doesn't really represent what happens here in Wyoming. We know different. We know different. We have tons of social media accounts and pictures and videos that show us differently. And this goes back to the fact that the state has done nothing to counter this vitriol toward wolves. They've just allowed it to happen. I, I mean, going back to Kim's point, I have gone to commission meetings where, yeah, people just stand up and say, and legislative meetings where people just stand up and say absolutely unfactual things. No one corrects them. Nobody corrects them and says, actually, no, you're not, you know, that's wrong. I mean, it just goes back to the same thing of like, they're eating all the elk. We are literally bursting at the seams in Wyoming with elk. And for anybody to be, to say that that is a problem right now, I mean, it is just 100% untrue. There and all these other myths and lies out there about wolves just continue to circulate. And we don't hear, you know, why doesn't the Game of Fish put out a statement saying, hey, actually, wolves are not a problem for elk. Wolves are healthy for elk because they've evolved together and they're predator and prey and they need each other. Where, where's that statement? When, when, when was that put out? Because I've never seen that. And until the Game and Fish or until the state is going to stand up and say, no, actually, you're wrong <laughs> and wolves are valuable then this stuff is going to keep happening. And that's why we need these laws passed now because we need, we cannot allow psychopaths like this to get out there and think that this is okay to do. Kim? No, I, I, I can't say anything more. You said it, it, it's so true. I think that we just got, we have to hold our state agencies accountable and we have to hold their feet to the fire to do their job correctly. And from what I know, especially in the state of Montana, and it's the same, and it's the same everywhere. I, I can't even hold Montana to this, but we seem to have state agencies that are there to manage populations of ungulates for the purpose of selling tags to kill ungulates. And anything that gets in the way of that must die. And to further that, and I believe we need to help our ranchers, I am 100% on board with making sure that our ranchers are safe and that we give them the correct tools. Snowmobiles are not correct tools. We should be taking some of the state agency money that they're getting and putting that towards that non-lethal mitigation and non-lethal tools to help them live in the wild country that they all love to be in. Every one of them loves it. I talk to ranchers a lot. I hear ranchers say the same thing. Man, I, I don't have an issue with wolves in general. I have an issue with wolves killing my livestock. I don't have an issue with bears, but I have an issue with bears killing my livestock and so forth with lions and all that. They don't have an issue with it. But what it is, is that they are not taught, they're not explained, they're not told, they're not given opportunity. They're just told, yeah, we'll kill that. Yeah, we'll kill that. That's easy. That's the easy fix. And so who wouldn't go for the easy fix? That's what our state agencies give is an easy fix. But it's killing our wildlife. It's not good for our wildlands. And we have to change that and we have to hold our legislators accountable because most of them in the state of Wyoming, Idaho, Montana are big ag uh, outfitters and so on and so forth. So the easy fix is easy to put into law. So that's why outrage is essential. Yeah. And it, I mean, it should be, it's worth being said to the entire community of hunters in North America, really, the hunting tradition is vulnerable. It's not invincible. And it, it might be hard to hear that, but no one is impervious to the momentum that's building against it because of things like this. I mean, some of these, some of these states are, I think, making hunters particularly think that they're, they are doing the thing that will help restore or 
make stronger the hunting tradition um, and make it invulnerable, particularly if you live here, wherever here is, and it just won't. Um, and making a statement by killing predators is is not helping. It's 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 it all it does is fracture ecosystems, threatens biodiversity. It will not help the hunting tradition. There are plenty of things that are going to affect the hunting tradition in the near future. And if ethical hunting is going to sustain, is going to survive through all of this, the only chance is through denouncing this kind of excessive killing or the contest, the the excess. This uh, things in the ballpark of this snowmobile stuff. I mean, hunting that is not based in science, but politics, the the hatred based hunting. Um, we we have to say this is terribly wrong. And if real hunting is going to continue, no no one can be passive about this kind of of garbage. Well, and the thing is, is that hunting is not declining because there's an anti hunting movement. <laughs> declining because people are more urbanized you know people are less they are less connected to their food and to nature you know it's we're not anti-hunting and i mean i have friends we have a board member and someone who is you know just outraged that that is a hunter they go out and they get their one elk the year of the year they fill their freezer they share it with their friends that's all there is to it they don't have to have all this gear and all of this stuff and the ATVs and all that, they go out there on foot. The hunting is going to continue to decline and the agencies keep, you know, they're just grasping on as hard as they can to, you know, this, this recruitment and retention and reactivation of hunters and that's how we're going to save you know wildlife management going into the 21st century no it's not it's that's that's going and is already gone pretty much so they need to start listening to every single other resident of the united states who also that that wildlife is held in the public trust for and yeah i got news for any hunter that does not want to stand up about about this and, and speak out against this they they're part of the problem you're part of the problem and if you stay silent you're condoning this um and that's it's unforgivable people people are going to remember that it's just true it's so true and i i i want to zoom out for just a second because this goes back to conversations i i believe Stephen and i have had with both of you whether on the podcast or just in person as we look at it on a national level, because this, I I really think this goes back to right when we, we, everybody was waiting for that wolf review to come from U S fish and wildlife. And it took such a long time and it comes out and it says, we have reviewed all the evidence and we do not feel that these animals need to be put back under federal protection. Correct me if I'm wrong, I believe there are many groups now that are suing U.S. Fish and Wildlife, correct, over that statement. And this is a major bullet of ammunition for that. In Wyoming, Kristen, do you think this is something, when, when you look at the, the suits that are coming, the investigation that's going on, do you foresee, and the, this is by no means the end, I'm just wondering, that they, we could circle back to those issues federally and think that this will get the attention of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife and say, you guys need to come back out here and really do a deep dive and really come out here and see what's happening. Because this is, like you say, one in countless tens or countless hundreds of stories that we've heard about not only just wolves, but other wildlife that's being persecuted this way. I wish I could sit here and say that I thought that that was going to happen. Um, we all thought that was going to happen originally with the petitions that we submitted. You know, we submitted the information that we had, which included things like this and the lack of competence in wildlife management and especially wolf management from all three of these states. But for the reasons that we did, because we wanted to see the federal government step in and say, hey, wait a minute. 
obviously these states were not ready to manage these wild, you know, this animal. This or there's still way too much uh, hatred and and violence toward them, but they didn't. And once again, it it comes back to that wildlife management problem. We're looking, they want to look at a big population and just say, oh, there's plenty of them. So, you know, guess it's fine, which there still isn't plenty of them, but, you know, they're they're very focused on numbers and they're just going to say, well, okay, you know, we have 2000 wolves in the West and we're going to call it good. And that's enough to, you know, maintain their genetic diversity and also, you know, have a population in the future. They don't care about what happens to the individual animal. And that's a problem within wildlife management as a whole. I mean, I have a natural resources degree and that's how I was, that's how I studied in college. You look at populations, you're worried about population level stuff. I didn't have a single class about animal ethics or animal cruelty or wildlife torture or anything like that. And so the state and and the states can pretty much get away with whatever they want right now because the US Fish and Wildlife Service has said, well, their populations are fine. So, you know, we're gonna come up with this national wolf plan and that's not gonna do anything to help wolves in the Northern Rockies. They're already under state management. And, you know, I, I go back and forth on whether or not to to have wolves federally protected right now because someday they are going to get delisted. There will be enough wolves because they are a resilient species. And then the management will be turned over to the states. And until we take care of the root problem of fixing wildlife management, they're going to this is going to just continue to be a repeated cycle over and over again. And so we've got to take care of the root issue here ASAP because whether they're federally listed or not, they're still getting killed in Wyoming, even when they're federally listed. They're still getting run over by snowmobiles, I guarantee it. <laughs> Shoot, shovel, and shut up. That's what do they do out here. So for me, it comes down to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has already said, no, we don't, we're, we're not, we're not concerned about the way the states are managing wolves and we're not going to do anything other than what we're already doing. And they're, they just, that's why we got to take them to court. That's why that's, that's why these lawsuits happen. And it, the thing that's found that usually what happens is we're winning these lawsuits off of the fact that the agencies are not following their own policies. They're not doing their, what they said they were going to do. They're not there. It's spelled out in black and white. Here's what you're supposed to do. It's not just about population numbers. It's about all these other things, too. So, you know, and Wyoming right now wants to, they're trying to prove without a doubt that they are ready to manage grizzly bears. Like, yep, we are. We got everything squared away. We got an awesome grizzly bear management plan. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, please give us give us that management authority. And it, there is zero reason to think that there will be any difference between the way wolves are managed and the way bears are managed in this state. And that's something real important that everybody's got to think about right now. Wow. Yeah. Empathy. <laughs> empathy is something that, that nobody looks at in it, there's, there's no empathy. There's, there's no moral compass there. None of that is there. And I find it interesting, you know, Kristen, that, that with, you know, you say, even within your degree, you were never taught everything's about numbers. Like you said, it's all about there's plenty, there's plenty, there's plenty. It's almost an appeasement, only you're trying to appease Mother Nature. And that's so arrogant, I guess. I don't know how else to say that. But, you know, we're not looking at what is best for the landscape. We're looking at what's best for the mighty dollar. You know, what can we make money on and how do we shut you up? You know, kind of a thing. And it's like, it's not, it's not just about wolves, which is hard for me to say being a wolf person, right? Because that's what I, but it's about so many other animals and the only animals they care about are ungulates and they don't care about them in healthy numbers. They care about them for how many numbers they can get to create money, right? It's not about what's healthy. It's not about the landscape. 
it's not about our ecosystems. It's not about any of that. I don't understand how we have state agencies and we have people within them that can wake up and go to work every single day and think there's enough numbers. It's all, it. it's, we are just in such a apathetic society and I don't know how to, I don't know how to manage that anymore. I think that that bothers me more than anything else. And Kristen's right. We have to change this. We have to change this. The ESA, I never thought I would ever hear myself say Dan Ash was right when he told me in 2015, stop hanging your hat on the ESA. Do I believe we need to put them back so that we can slap the hell out of these states? Yes. But as Kristen said, if we don't fix the systemic problem, we're going to be here again and again and again because it's not going to change. So Kristen, with that, in, in all seriousness, if people are looking at this story and they're outraged, they're upset, they're trying to figure out what is the way forward, where do they put that anger, that vitriol, that advocacy? Tell people where, obviously, fall, I, I mean, we'll, we'll say here, follow Wolves of the Rockies, follow Wyoming uh, Untrapped, follow uh, Wyoming Wildlife Advocates. But what are ways that they can contact these legislatures, these agencies? I know those numbers have been put up at, all over social media, but you are in the state and you know what's the best use of resources. So tell those that are listening that if they want to get involved, they want to advocate what's a way for them to do that and where is a way for them to do that? Where's a place for them to do that? Sure. I mean, I've had so many people come to me and just say, I want to help. Like, just, you know, use me however you can, because I need, I, I've got to do something. I can't just sit back and watch this and think that nothing's going to change. So I'm super grateful for all of those people. I feel like there is a tsunami behind me right now. And I'm just the warning signal. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I have, I don't just feel like it. We do. We do have, I would be willing to say thousands, if not maybe tens of thousands of people that are mad about this and want to do something. Um, we will be putting out action alerts. Like you said, follow us on social media. We we all have newsletters that come out, so sign up for those. Um, right now, we're pushing for people to uh, engage with the Game and Fish Department and also the... Uh, Game and Fish Commission. There is a meeting next week that is occurring in Riverton. If you're in Wyoming, you need to get to that meeting some way. You got to be there in person. They are not used to having people show up at their doorstep and demanding change. And they're the ones that have the political power to do so. They can put the pressure on the legislature. They can go to the legislators and say, look, Wyoming is under scrutiny and this is wrong and we need to change this. Not just because Wyoming's under scrutiny, but it's because it's wrong. It's ethically and morally wrong. You know, if that's not an argument, I don't know what is. So, you know, we need to be asking our state wildlife management agency, what are you going to do to prevent this from happening to another animal in Wyoming? And we need to be asking the Wyoming Game and Fish Commission, what are you going to be doing? to make sure this doesn't happen to another animal in Wyoming. And we need to be asking the legislators, what are you gonna be doing to make sure this doesn't happen again in Wyoming? We, now we need to do this in a very careful and methodical manner. People need to be respectful. Trust me, I am mad. I'm upset. I've cried, I'm angry. I'm all of those things that everybody is. I'm outraged and shocked. I have a lot of, <laughs> lot of anger and I go to the gym and I work that out. Your place to take that out is not on public officials. I know it's hard. We want to hold them accountable, but we have to do it in a respectful way. You know, giving, putting out death threats to public officials and stuff is only going to backfire on us. So if, if you do want to speak, be clear, be direct and to the point that you, you know, disagree that this is even allowed in Wyoming, 
and that you want to see something done about it and you won't stop bothering them until something is done about it. And, you know, just let them know that you're not going away until this has changed. And because that, that we're not, we're not going away until this has changed. I don't care if it takes me the rest of my career. I will, I'm not moving until this has changed. So I know other people feel that way right now and stay engaged with it. Don't, they're waiting for us to go away. They're, they're waiting for us to just be like, well, they're not going to do anything. So, you know, let's move on to the next thing. You, we got to keep at it. You got to, I mean, it takes stamina and this is going to be a longer road. Um, the next legislative session doesn't start until January. It'll be January through March. Now the committees are meeting in the interim. They've already got their kind of marching orders for what they're going to, the committee bills they're going to take up. So we are going to have to be working very closely with some select legislators to try and get this, uh, get, you know, some bills introduced um, this next upcoming legislative session. So I, I once had a, a legislator, a longtime legislator tell me that it takes six times for the average bill to get introduced before it gets passed. So now, of course, you know, if the agriculture brings a bill, it gets passed the first time. I'll just say that in Wyoming because I've seen that happen a million times. Um, but yeah, it's it, this is a it's it's a short term goal right now of speaking up and making sure that you are letting the game and fish know that this is important to you, and you're letting the governor's office know this is important to you. Um, right now, we want to kind of you know hold off on the sheriff's sheriff's office and the prosecutor down in Suffolk County. They're doing what they can. They're doing in the investigation. You know, we definitely um, want to leave them alone and let them be able to do what they need to do and find the facts they need to find. Um, but yeah, just stay engaged, follow our social media. We will have calls to action for you to take. We have a very strategic plan that we have come up with that is going to be a methodical way that we're going to get change finally here in Wyoming. And, you know, if you don't want this wolf to have died in vain, then do what you can, where you can. And another thing I want to mention is in your own home state, if you're not in Wyoming, you go, you take this incident and you go to your director of your state wildlife agency and you say, hey, did you see what happened in Wyoming? Could this happen in our state? And if it could, what are the laws like? And can we change those here? And why? Why is that not something that's illegal here? Let make your wildlife management agency state specifically, do they condone cruelty or do they fight against it? I think that's, this is our moment right now for that to be a piece of wildlife management reform. And we can't let that pass us by. And uh, I mean, you stole Carter's thunder. He's going to be upset, but it, he, he told me to give a final message um, on this podcast. It's very similar to what you just said, but um. He asked that we remind you when you're writing your letters and making your calls to legislators, be assertive, don't attack anyone, don't insult, but make it clear, I'm not going to stop, I'm not going to quit, and write a letter to every legislator you can, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, etc., and get behind an organization like Trap Free Montana, Wyoming Untrapped, Wolves of the Rockies, so they can channel their attorneys and efforts towards achieving something. So that was Carter's message to everyone. And, and usually it's a uh, it's good idea to listen to Carter. <laughs> I think that I just want to really quickly add, there's a lot of things, as Kristen said, and, and um, we are following, like I said, their lead. Um, and you need to be paying attention to Wyoming Wildlife Advocates, Kristen Combs, you know, we've got Wyoming Untrapped, you know, Lisa Robinson, um, all of us are here in this in this together without a doubt, but we have the support from around the world, which has been uplifting. But what we need, if anyone out there has information, has video, has photos, has anything, anything from this incident that took place on February 29th, please, I promise you will reach out. We will keep you confidential, but we need this information and we need it. The law enforcement needs it. The sheriff's department needs it. They need the information 
so that we can move forward. We need an information to show that this is happening. This is what's going on. And this is why we need to make this change. Um, when you see and follow these organizations, take that information, take those calls to action, push this stuff out to media as much media as you can. We're obviously doing everything we can, but my point is this, this has to stay as, as, as Kristen said, we got January. That's a little ways away for, for, for that, to, um, for legislation, but we have to keep this moving. We have to make this a movement. I believe it could be a federal movement. As Kristen said, again, talk to your own wildlife agencies, but we need to keep this out there. We need to keep the heat on, but respect is important. You can be very direct, but you don't have to be mean and you don't have to be insightful to get your point across and it will come across much better with respect. And so, yeah, you know, it's, it's, yeah, Kristen said it all. I'm going to sit back and drink my tea. We cannot thank both of you enough, uh, Carter before that, Emily before that, to really give the full scope of this situation from all angles. And again, we will have all of the information in these descriptions of these podcasts. If you're listening to these, um, Again, reach out to, if you want to reach out to Stephen and I, that's perfectly fine. And we can direct you in ways that you need to go. We are obviously a conduit to help as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, but Kim Bean, Kristen Combs, thank you both so very much for all that you are doing, the work that you are, I know you're going to continue to do on this um, and bring about change for not just wolves, but the wildlife uh, that deserves to live in Rome free um, and have their lives um, be treated with respect and dignity. Um, yeah, I just can't thank you both enough for being here. So thank you for that, uh, for all you're doing. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. Just hang tight while we sign off. Um, take action. Those of you that want to house to you all out there. We'll be with you next time. Bye everybody. Looking for more information about Wolf Connection or the podcast, please visit our website at wolfconnection.org where you can donate, sponsor a wolf or become a volunteer.